was he around the perils from the yeah. 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 was fantastic. Yeah, he was. When he died, yeah. he died. Yeah. And actually, that's my father on the fire. Is there anyone here from River Valley? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't recognize Sorry, you. Sorry, thanks. Okay. You know, we're still wearing these. I things. know you are. <laughs> well, that's smart. That's smart. There's a lot of. Okay. Thanks. Just you today? Good morning. Nikki. Okay, Nikki. Good morning. Good morning. Anyone else? Okay, with that said, we'll have uh, our opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance before we continue the meeting. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love and blessings you have bestowed over our lives. You're familiar with our thoughts and our ways. On many occasions we fall back on our limited knowledge and strength to solve those issues. Let us remember that you know our heart and thoughts. Your ways are not misguided. And you are full of wisdom. Let us reflect and focus on your will for us. Our nation has turned her back on you in so many ways. 
and continues to decline socially, economically, and morally. May we realize that you are the God of all creation, love, wisdom, and clarity, and not to push you aside. Establish the work that you would have us to do on our finite days of life. We pray that we are that those are purpose we pray that they are purposeful and bring glory to you. Father, today we celebrate the United States Coast Guard's birthday. Since 1790, the Coast Guard has kept the nation's waterways safe. They protect us from drugs, human trafficking, and terrorism. The 44,500 active members of the U.S. Coast Guard are on alert 24-7, and we thank them and ask you for protection over them that only you can provide. Lord, we are thankful that we live in a land of freedoms. May each generation know that is paid for with a price and never take it for granted. May you bless our meeting and our beautiful valley that you have created. These things we humbly pray in your name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. At this time, we'll convene the Commissioner's public meeting. And we'll ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Commissioner Sir will not be able to join us today, so it's just Commissioner Mayor Vito and myself. And we'll ask for public comments on agenda items only at this time. Any other line? No. Hearing none, we'll move on. Okay, proclamation. National Health Center Week. Okay. National Health Center Week 2022, a proclamation. Whereas for over 10 years, the River Valley Health and Dental, your center for care, a community health center, has provided high quality, affordable, comprehensive primary and preventative health care in Lycoming County's underserved communities, delivering value to and having a significant impact on the health and well being of the county. Whereas River Valley Health and Dental is a critical element of the provision of health care in Lycoming County, serving both rural and urban communities and often providing the only accessible and dependable source of primary care for many in our community. Whereas River Valley Health and Dental continues to offer reliable, affordable, high quality care to the county's most vulnerable and underserved communities. Whereas every day River Valley Health and Dental strives to develop new approaches to integrating a wide range of services beyond primary care including oral health, behavioral health, chiropractic and pharmacy services to meet the needs and challenges of our community. Whereas National Health Center Week offers the opportunity to celebrate America's over 1,400 health center organizations with over 12,000 service delivery sites, their dedicated staff, board members, patients, and all those responsible for their continued success and growth since the first health centers opened their doors more than 50 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas during National Health Center Week, we celebrate the legacy of America's community health centers and their vital role in shaping the past, present, and future of America's healthcare system, and the 10th anniversary of the River Valley Health and Dental Center's funding as a federally qualified health center in Lycoming County. Now, therefore, we, the County Commissioners of Lycoming County, do hereby proclaim August 7th through 13th, 2022, as National Health Center Week. We encourage all residents of Lycoming County to take part in this week by visiting the River Valley Health and Dental Center open house on Thursday, August 11th from 4 to 6 p.m. and celebrating the important partnership between our community health centers and the communities they serve. Lycoming County Commissioners Scott L. Metzger, Chairperson, Tony R. Masser, Vice Chairman, Richard Maravito, Secretary. Mr. Chairman, we have the CE CFO, I believe, here today. Um, and I just want to say, I had the privilege of being on the board that set up the uh, Community Health Center 10 years ago uh, when I was in the state legislature. And uh, it was extremely important. Uh, back then, we had a lot of emergency room use for primary health care. And that was driving up the cost for uh, UPMC. UPMC was a strong advocate uh, and actually provided a lot of the initial um, support that was needed. And of course, the federal government recognized that one of the ways to bring uh, emergency room care costs down was to have people who needed primary care to go to uh, a health center. And in those 10 years, it's really grown. They played a vital role during the 
um, during the pandemic in terms of both uh, providing vaccines and also um, testing. And also they've been very supportive of Let's End COVID. I mean, quite frankly, without them, Let's End COVID's efforts to try to educate the community would not have been possible because they, they uh, provided so much of the necessary support. So, uh, plus, plus the dental that they take around to the schools. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to invite her. Yes. Would you like to come up, please? Carla. Maybe Maybe you can introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Carla Sexton. I am the compliance officer at the River Valley Health and Dental Center, but I also have responsibility for the marketing and PR for the center as well. So that's why you get to see my face around so much. And I want to thank the commissioners for their support, not just through the pandemic, but through the 10 years that we've been at River Valley and we've been lucky to be able to obtain grants and be able to expand our facilities and do a lot of specialty care for the community including our mobile dental van uh, which you'll see out on Thursday as well so we're really looking forward to celebrating our 10th anniversary it's hard to believe that it's been 10 years um, since we became federally qualified we've been in the community longer than that but that 10 years has been a period of time of substantial growth and uh, we've kind of taken over the whole Hepburn Plaza and continue to grow. We now have a dental clinic in Jersey Shore, um, which uh, just opened this year, and we're looking and hoping to expand to uh, Clinton County next year. So Wonderful. And the center is open to anyone, and it's, uh, it's payment on a sliding scale, right? Absolutely, and we take all medical insurances as well, so we... Uh, are really a one-stop shop for a lot of people yeah and it's a high quality high quality place um well we'll certainly encourage people to come out next week to the open house thank you for your thank you thank, thank you. you and tony Masser is going to actually speak for us um so you guys will be well represented great thank you thank you thanks, we'll Steve. take a photo here with and extend your oh. thanks to your staff i will thanks. absolutely yeah. yes Stop bid opening 2.1, Nikki. Good morning. Uh, we had a bid for the epoxy overlay project on Lycoming County Bridge number 101. We had three bidders um, HRI, their bid was $57,670. We had a bid from Swank Construction Company. $115,274.67 and then a bid from Mar Allen Concrete Products and their bid was $43,705.95. Okay. Isn't it always amazing the range of bids we get when we put in for sealed bids for public spending public money. So we've got a spread here from 43 to 115. Yeah, that's no, the importance of the, of the public bidding. Okay, thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Okay, reports. Uh, Brainy, vote to approve accounts payable cash requirement report. Good morning, commissioners. Presented for your ratification are the invoices due through August 10th, 2022 that were paid on August 5th, 2022 in the amount of $1,951,549.46. And they break down as 62.85% general fund or $1,226,525.44. Grants and other sources amounts for $146,022.49 or approximately 7.5%. Uh, RMS's share was $533,535.13, uh, 27.34%, and escrow funds were $45,466.40, 
or approximately 2.33 percent. Were there any questions this week? I don't have any. No. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Info items. Maya? Yep. We're just going out to bid for our fourth quarter of food products for prison and pre-release. Thank you. All right. Moving on to action items. Uh, 5.1. PCCD. Yeah. Um, this is a renewal award notice that we received. Um, it's a joint effort with the courts as well as West Branch Drug and Alcohol. So a portion of the funds will stay with the county, which will help offset a um, salary portion for adult probation officer for the drug court area, and then as well as some operational costs associated with those services. And then the remainder will go to West Branch Drug and Alcohol as a single uh, county authority. What's the remainder amount of this West Branch? So West Branch will be getting um, $230,106, and then um, the county will be getting, um, I think it's, check this, $149,894. And do we know how West Branch utilizes this one? Yep, I have a breakdown if you just want, if you want, if you want me yeah. to talk about it. So um, West Branch uses their funds for personnel, which includes four staff, some travel and training for their annual conference, uh, client transportation, drug and alcohol testing supplies, graduation supplies, MAT treatment, um, physician visits, treatment education materials, and treatment services. The, the bulk of those go into treatment services at 121,000. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Nope. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carry. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Commissioners uh, seeking your approval to appoint George Logue to the Lycombe County Zoning Hearing Board. This is a five-year term. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 And so carried. I want to thank Mr. Logue for uh, volunteering to be on this board and, and all our board members for all our boards for the time that they take to uh, uh, serve on those boards. Each one of them are, are vital for our community and uh, we take their own time and resources to volunteer for those boards. We thank you. Thank each one of them for your service. Okay. Alright, 5.3 and 5.4, Jerry. Morning, Jerry. Good morning, Commissioners. Jerry Kennedy, CIO for the County. Um, before you, 5.3 is a uh, battery replacement for our data center UPS. Uh, this provides backup power should there be a power outage or glitch. Um, keeps our systems running in proper order. Uh, this is part of a five-year uh, replacement cycle, and these are now due at a cost of $17,347.95. It is part of the 2022 budget. Okay. Any questions? No motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All bears aye. 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 So carried. And then 5.4 is a refresh of our data center equipment. Uh, this is a five-year lease program with Dell. Uh, the last time we did this was six years ago. Uh, comes to a point where our annual maintenance um, becomes a point of diminishing returns. Uh, so it was uh, determined that this year we'll jump and do an upgrade of our back-end systems. The annual payment on the lease is $293,605.47. Uh, totaling $1.344 million over five years with a $1 buyout. And this is also being uh, paid for with uh, 2022 budget funds. Okay, thank you. Um, so, <coughs> any questions? Yeah. So Jerry, um, so Dell had a a lease that had a uh, service agreement with us, right? Yes. Okay. So you said that it gets to the point where the equipment ages out. It makes sense. Our our equipment becomes obsolete in the world of technology. So what is it on the backside that we're that we're paying 1.3 million for? Is it the cloud? Uh, no. Well, it's it's our own cloud. 
it's our own internal cloud. Yeah, we uh, we run a virtual environment, so this is the hardware. Um, basically, five servers that run more than eighty. Um, these are the these are the virtual cloud that we I can remember years ago with uh, oh yeah Carl, right? Yeah. Okay, so these these are gone now. Their useful life is. There, there's one piece of the puzzle that Dell is discontinuing this year, okay. so that's a, a caveat to it. You know, we, we can't get support on one piece of the puzzle, right. so it's another weight on the scale to do the upgrade this year. Okay, well, it's expensive, I know, but I, I remember those those virtual clouds or yep. virtual uh, servers. Just for comparison purposes, we did go through the exercise of. Uh, determining what it would be to take our environment and put it in the cloud uh, and that comes out to 360 annually and we own nothing and, and right, in perpetuity yeah with increases and, as it, and it doesn't decrease or remove every expense that we have here today um, it just it's an ad right. if we were to transition to the cloud Alan would that take a couple years and that's if we have technologies from our vendors that actually are cloud compatible. So you have created a internal cloud that allows us to use many more, have many more, has many more capabilities and storage space, and we don't have to do it externally. Correct. But we do it through the through you know, back back in the day. We when we were in the courthouse, we were, uh, you know bursting at the seams we had lots of racks and, and tables and everything with lots of physical servers that cost ten to you know twenty thousand dollars a piece um, so as you add the replacement cost of those every five years every five to seven years um, we buy the hardware we condense everything into literally something that will fit inside this podium um, and we run our entire environments both here and the, public, the Department of Public Safety. So it's our own cloud within the cloud? It's our own cloud in the cloud of TSP. Yeah, we don't have, we're not in the cloud, the external cloud. Right. We're, we've created. Yeah, it's an internal cloud. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll move to approve. Okay, I'll second. Hi. Hi. Luckily, there's no rain in our clouds. <laughs> or lightning. But is there Don't rain on our coffee? parade. Right. Coming up. Chair, you missed it. What? I said, but is there a cloud in your coffee? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, next. 5.5 uh, and 5.6, Nancy. Um, come on, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. We can take mission concerns up soon. Thank you. Do you want these for uh, <coughs> Mr. Mister? Yeah, I need these right now. Oh, okay. That works. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. The first item I have is 5.5 .5, is vote to approve agreement with Central County's Youth Center. It's 2022 budgeted item. Um, don't know what to say. You see what the bottom line is. It's a $95 increase. It was $300. It's a 31.6% increase. Who's in touch? <laughs> I tried, and the, the flat out answer was no. Well, but they're detention that's bound to happen sooner or later. Yeah, yeah. It's the, I'm, I'm kind of uh, interested to see what next year is because next year. I'm going to put. The, I'm going to try and put the brakes on this, but it's really hard because this is run by Center County Commissioners, right. and we really don't have a. We really don't have a say in their prices. Yeah. Okay. They are what they are. Yeah. Okay. And we know that in the past there's been difficulty even having them take some of our kids. They yeah. they uh, pick and choose whether they want to. Yes, they um, do. What was I going to ask you? Uh, how many do we have there now? Right now, none. None. Okay. And this, have we used it this year to date? Yes. Do you remember how many? Um, may have maybe one or two kids there. Okay. We try to. Uh, we're trying our best to avoid trying to like put them on electronic monitors and stuff if we can. 
right. to keep them out of the detention centers. Yeah, because it's all and they're a distance away, yes. so it's harder for families to. Yeah. Okay. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Here, say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Did the worst one first. So now we'll do a 5.6, which is vote to approve amendment with Justice Works Youth Care 2022 budget item, as with three percent increase across all of their programs. So, uh, like. <clears throat> um, the rapid response, uh, the VIP, it was uh, $77. What's 77? Now it's 79.31. Okay. Any questions? No. A motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Perry, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. All right, um, Commissioner Comment. Anything? Yeah, I have, a, I have a statement I'd like to make. Last Thursday, July 28th, the Lycoming County Board of, of Commissioners in a public meeting, a vote was approved two to zero to approve $1,012,240 and funding to the Old City Williamsport LLC for the East End Gateway Project. First, I'd like to commend Dr. Kent Trackey and the Board of Directors of Lycoming County for their vision for the college in the City of Williamsport. They have accomplished many of their goals over the past several years to improve the college in the city. Next, I'd like to thank Pine Ridge Construction Management for investing in our community. Both entities are investing millions of dollars for education and economic development into this section of our community. I have been supportive of the East End Gateway Project and the Old City Revitalization. My further comments are in no way against any either entity or the overall project. Last week was the first commissioner's meeting I have missed in three years due to a planned vacation with my wife. On Tuesday, July 26th, my two colleagues called me while I was on vacation to express they had met with the college and the developers and the college and the developer were requesting a million dollars towards the project for a parking garage. It is my understanding that this garage is 40,000 square feet with 165 parking stalls and Commissioner Mirabito made a note on the phone that the county would receive 42 spaces. I stated to both of them on the phone that I was not ready at that point to commit to that amount of money as I had several questions that needed to be answered. Some of those questions where what is the amount the city was willing to invest and where the money was going to be coming from, among other questions I had. Commissioner Massar stated he was, um, he stated he was calling to see if I would agree to place it on a future agenda. As a chairman, I'm the one that sets the agenda and I agreed that when I returned from a vacation, I would place it on a future agenda. They noted that the governor recently reopened the Iraqi grant process and there was a short window until August 19th. On Thursday, July 28th, my two colleagues called me after the commissioner's public meeting to advise me they had amended the agenda to add a request for funding to Old City Williamsport LLC for the East End Gateway project. They approved the request after a 2-0 vote for the monies to be allocated from the ARPA funds that the county has received. The county would be contributing 3.8%, the city 3.1%, the state another 4% of the total project for the college, and the, and the college and developer paying approximately 89% of the overall plan. 
I believe my colleagues did not have prior knowledge that Dr. Trackey nor the developer were going to be in attendance that morning. Nor do I believe that Dr. Trackey nor the developer did anything wrong. It was my understanding that there was a miscommunication about the timing of when the item was going to be placed on the agenda. What I find disturbing about this action is that it was voted and approved so quickly without the consideration of the chairman. In 72 hours, a million dollars was discussed, voted, and passed. My colleagues could have attempted to contact me by phone to join a meeting, or could have stated the chairman is not available this morning, but out of respect, we will table this till next Thursday, since he has informed us that he has several questions. I fully understand there was a deadline for the RAPP grant, and that was to be August 19th. Since my return, I've spoke to a state official that has knowledge of the process, has knowledge of the process. The homework could have been completed and the decisions by the commissioners could have been made prior to the deadline. So this decision was made without my input and without my questions being answered. And the monies are being taken from the ARPA funds that are being discussed at this time by all three commissioners. I'm not sure at this time which category these monies are gonna come under. The chairman did not have the opportunity to vote on a million dollar allocation out of our $22 million allocation. That's the second dish decision on that day that I was not privileged to vote on. A decision that involves a million dollars warrants all three of our input. Since my return from vacation, I have spoke to the city. I've been informed they have not yet voted and have not approved their 3.1% of the overall project as reported. It is wrong how this matter was handled last week, and it does not display good government. I would hope in the future that my colleagues would be more mindful moving ahead so monies are allocated from all three of us, and we're all involved in the decision-making process. We are all elected officials, and when one of us is excluded, it's a slap in the face of those voters that place that individual in the office. The Office of Commissioner was designed to make sure that the three of us have equal representation, and we need to make sure that happens in the future. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I certainly want to apologize for uh, how this occurred. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you, though, that I don't think we said it's coming out of our, our, our funds. I think we said that we didn't say where it was coming from, whether it comes from ARPA or at 13, but that's sort of beside well, the there's point. There's a resolution upstairs that said it was coming out of ARPA funds. Well, the resolution needs to be changed because okay. it's not necessarily coming out of ARPA funds. It could come out of Act 13. That's something that is, we, don't, we don't need to uh, the public vote to change. But I want to apologize, and I, I haven't seen Commissioner Maser today. And um, He was aware I was going to make this statement, and he's already apologized. Uh, yeah, no, I'll apologize. and. and and unfortunately, what happened is that, well, first, all th actually, you weren't here last term. Commissioner Masser and I had allocated money last Board of Commissioners, $600,000 to the East, uh, the, to the new Old City Project. Um, I said at the meeting on Tuesday, so on Tuesday we met with them. We can't vote when we meet with people, but I feel it's important to give people my sense of where I'm at, it, and I told them flat out that I was supportive of it. Um, that doesn't mean anything except it allows them to be able to say to whomever that, well, we have one commissioner who's supportive. Part of what our concern here was that uh, the governor opened up the Act 13, I'm sorry, the RCAP, RCAP. grants on June, July 19th, and we met with them about five or six days later. So we're already into July 25th, I think, or what day did you say it was? Yeah. July 28th. July 28th. Yeah, no, the meeting was the 28th, the, right, the public meeting. So we met with them on the 26th, and there was some concern expressed about their ability to get this and then get the city on board in order to meet the deadline for the RCAP with the state, because the state wants to see that the county and the city. And this is not by way of any excuse or anything. This I just want you to understand that there wasn't an intentional effort to try to 
cut you out. And I apologize for the way it was done. I mean, it, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, and I, I think that it makes a lot of sense. And too often, things are often brought to us at the last minute. Uh, now, in this case, they just had learned that the RCAP was being reopened. And so they came to us, and uh, they needed to then get whatever was going to happen with us to get the city to vote and so forth. Both Commissioner Masser and I were surprised to see Dr. Tracti in the off in the audience that day. And I and from what I understand, there was a text sent from the planning department to him, and somehow there was a mistake on the date. And instead of saying come to the August fourth meeting, it said come to the July twenty eighth meeting. And at that point, we had to decide: do we? And, and I guess the concern on their part was that they had a lot of stuff to do in order to make the August 19th. So I, I, I totally appreciate what you're saying, and we certainly, I think all three of us will be mindful in the future and all so that we don't is, do it. Is it. I could have been reached by phone, yeah. you know that, and or it could have been tabled till today. Yeah. Oh, no, there's no question we could have tabled it. Well, it wasn't on the agenda. We had to change the agenda. We We were concerned that we didn't want to do things that would diminish their ability to get more state money because it was it was a situation where we're putting up some money and the total amount that the county's putting up the three point three point one percent three point eight county the city's putting up three point one yeah the city's putting up three point one the county yet. no I know right they haven't had a meeting well hopefully our support for it will encourage them to support it. And I think that um, sometimes elected bodies are not willing to step out and do something until they see other elected bodies take action. And I think one of our concerns was we wanted to be sure that they understood that the county was in it. But you have a perfectly legitimate uh, concern there. It, it, it is a lot of money. I don't want you or the public to think that we did it flippantly. I was right out very upfront that I would support the project. So if it came on the 28th or the 4th, and it wasn't, you know, I, it, it would pass or not pass. I was going to support it. Right. So, but uh, but I understand how you feel how you feel slighted by that. And we certainly will work to oh, it's avoid. Not, it's not me. I represent the people that <coughs> voted me in office. Absolutely. It's a slap on them. And I watched the 57 minutes of the of the meeting. Yeah. Watched the entire meeting. Right. Now, once was the commissioner, the chairman mentioned about he had additional questions. There was. Do we, do we have any questions? Are all the questions answered with the statements? Well, the chairman had questions and they weren't answered. Okay. All right. I made a point during that question and answer to state that the county would receive the 42 parking spaces. And I made a point of stating that the, yeah, the county would have input into whether or not what the entity is that takes over the parking garage because we have concerns about it becoming a non-taxable entity. If it goes to the to the parking authority, so but I, I understand where you're coming from. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, public comment. We have any from the audience. Good morning, Tom. Morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Tom Adams. Uh, Hollywood Circle, Williamsport. Um, Tough situation sometimes uh, in government. We appreciate your work, and, uh, everything that people do for us, you know, in our country. Um, I had a little trouble sleeping last night, so I put on a made a mistake, but a little bit of information on who's on and uh, just the just the things that are going on in our country with you know, and this is an ongoing. Theme, I guess, uh, with I think a, an attack on our youth, our system, our education system, just once again removing any kind of morality out of out of our whole society, out of our education, and references to God, and it's it's a concerted attack. You know, this is what communists do, and it's in the communist manifesto to to do these kind of things, and uh, I just. We pre would hope that all people, when when we vote, we vote with some of these things in mind. Who supports uh, communist ideals like like uh, 
violence, the violence against uh, see these pro-life centers are being attacked. You know that that's a more bloodshed on on uh, you know people that support that type of stuff. I mean they're attacking innocent centers that really help a lot of women and families, especially after children are born. If there's full support, and you know I hate to say it, you know with the the abortion centers, they don't support that type of stuff. And they actually support the uh, the harvesting of, of organs and, and tissue, and, and uh, it becomes a marketplace. And and I read the, in a, a letter from a doctor in the Sun Gazette, he, he responded to an article by a doctor about uh, abortion. It was a, that was the main issue, but one of the one of the statements made in the, in the article is that you know, life starts at conception. Well, this doctor Arno Vosk, an MD out of Williamsport, apparently says that um, we. I'm sorry. Uh, life. There's no absolutely no scientific consensus as to when a human life begins. An honest, honest medicine teaches us this. Well, I hope I never have to have that doctor for care because science definitely shows that anything's growing is alive and that's, that's life. You know, dead things don't grow. And only, only humans ever come out of the womb. So uh, it's this kind of misinformation, this, this type of mindset is destroying the, the Western world. And um, we just need to stand against it and continue to have uh, a reliance on God and keep him in our forethoughts and, uh, and realize that morality and uh, education have to go together and religion. Um, just one, one note, August 17th, 1789, George Washington signed in the bill the Northwest Ordinance and Article 3 of that ordinance is about education, was that religion, morality, and knowledge were the main tenets for it for public education, they wanted to make sure that people knew that when they spoke about religion, it was Christianity, and that's what was going to keep people's freedom. But the full knowledge of that and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and this is what they're talking about, not just biblical knowledge, but all knowledge. And they started ten, 10 years after the revolution, they started more universities in the country prior, 150 years prior to that revolution, because they wanted to make sure that their descendants were going to be well educated and then what brings about freedom and liberty and what keeps it. Okay, okay. thank you Tom. Any other public comment? I've got some online. Yes. <clears throat> Start at the top. Let's see. Just read. Jacob Stopper first, Vase of Flowers. Second, Batara Yasharal. So y'all is always dependent on Dow and any upgrades you gotta pay. What about the, about more stimulus during this mock inflation business? MCG. Thank you, Commissioners Metzger and Mayor Vito, for responding positively to my concern about providing a shelter for the citizens of Lycoming County in the event of a radioactive attack. Carlos Saldivia, aside from political shenanigans, what does the county get in return for the one million for the parking lot the college will own and revenue from? Tara Yashara, that's the big picture, Carlos, I agree. Carlos, two thumbs up. Tara. No accountability, no revenue for the city, SMH. Matara, I need help. They, don't, they do not agree that fast for me and my family. I would like to open a daycare center in need finding, SMH. Carlos, the city waiting for another government agency to take the lead is precisely why the county should have more valid reasons as to what's in it for us. Supporting institution that has declining attendance. Matara, separation of church and state. Matara, he's rambling. That's it. Okay, thank you. 
So I, I do want to respond on, to the answer if they were here. Um, aside from the tangible 42 parking spaces, there's always the question of how do we stimulate economic development? And um, you know what's happening with this project is what's called a public-private partnership, which is, as, as the chairman mentioned, about 88% of the funds for this project are coming from the private sector, or 89%. They're coming either from the developer or, for, or for, uh, from Lycoming College, which is a private institution. And those funds from Lycoming College come from alumni and other individuals. So the question becomes, you know, it's a, it's a tough question whether we should put public funds in. But when I weigh the challenges we face in declining population in the county and the challenges we face in um, having a place where people will come and put down roots so that we can build houses, so that we can reduce the tax burden, versus the use of in either Act 13 money or, a, or American Rescue Plan money, not taxpayer real estate funds. I come down on the side of supporting it because I think that in the big picture of trying to revitalize our county, we need to have that kind of investment in infrastructure. So a developer might come in and say, listen, I'm willing to put up the office building and I'm willing to put up and sell the townhouses and stuff, but I don't want to build a parking garage because I'm not in the business of running parking garages. And of course, you can't have the building without the parking garage because there won't be any place to have people park. Um, should it be 100% on the private developer? One could argue that. Should it be 100% on the public? One could argue that too. Um, I, I think that in a situation like this where the private sector is putting in 89% and we're being asked to build some infrastructure in terms of the parking garage, our, our $1 million contribution from either Act 13, which is the gas drilling funds, or American Rescue Plan, which is the federal funds, I think it's appropriate. And I think, uh, that's aside from the whole decision-making process, that's a whole, that's, that's, that's a different kettle of fish. And, and, and I hope nobody in this county holds it against Commissioner Metzger um, because obviously uh, he didn't vote on it, although you're supportive of it. So I won't ask you how you would vote because that's sort of irrelevant at this point. But, um, and, but I think that if you have questions, you ought to raise the questions. If the que if questions other than the ones that have been answered. Like, I still have questions. I, yeah, I'll, I'll raise them. No, I think you should but because I think we should get those questions, those answered from... Uh, yeah, I don't think at any point that we should spend a million dollars in three days. I understand that. But I guess my point is that you, we can reverse decisions. And if you raise questions that are not appropriately answered to your satisfaction and affect our, our uh, decision making, which has happened on other issues, mm -hmm. not a million dollars, but all of us have raised questions that the others didn't think about, which is the whole point of having three commissioners, um, you should raise them because we can reverse something before August 19th. You know. I mean, actually, August 19th isn't even a drop-dead deadline anyway, in the sense that you know, we could always reverse at any time. But I would hope we wouldn't do that. But I think it's important for you to raise them. That's the only thing I want to respond. One more that just popped up. Uh, Bill Fenderson is asking, is there an update on the airport? Well, I think the update on the airport. Like recently. No. The update on the airport is we're waiting to see um, and I'm not sure whether the, uh, we had that meeting back in uh, was it early July, late June. Yeah, and I don't know. I wasn't at the chamber update. It didn't come. No, nothing was, nothing was said. No, we we are the airline that possibly might be coming in with with not jets but with a nine seater plane is awaiting a bid response on another airport, and that's where we are yeah, with the airport. If two, if, out of, two out of if they didn't get them, they were going to come to us. They were going to come to us, yeah. Another, another state. Yeah. They were in Indiana and Illinois. But what I would say is contact, all citizens should contact their federal senators and congressmen and say, we need you to push the airlines with some federal legislation to say that you have to serve all airports. 
that it doesn't, you know, that was the case. And this is an example, this is really important, I think, for people to understand. We often talk about how regulations, um, you know, are bad for business. Well, there was a regulation prior to the deregulation of the airline industry in the 1978-1980 period that's, that forced airlines to serve all airports. And in airline deregulation that happened over 50 years ago, that went away. So they don't have to serve us. If they can't make money serving us, uh, they don't have to serve us. That's particularly a slap in the face when we use federal funds to help them out with the ARP, I mean with the uh, coronavirus pandemic and stuff. So, you know, you, should, you have to continue to push the federal officials to try to do something. And we as local and state will continue to push too. Well, airlines continue to take a beating. The state colleges lost one of their, their carriers. Um, and uh, so and they're one of the busier rural, air, rural uh, airports. Yeah. And they've lost one of their carriers, so um, it continues to take a beat in the rural airports. Two more. Yeah. All right, uh, Carlos Saldivia. Fair enough, Commissioner Mayor Vito. But what was the pitch from Lycoming College regarding the reason? The reason to have us involved? Yes. Well, I think that like I think that like Cumming College and the developer were saying, listen, we have put in, you know, we're putting twenty million dollars into economic development. Now that's even separate from what the college did with the entrance to the college and with the music center. And granted, those that's their facility and that's their mission to serve students, right? So one could say, well, they're just doing what their mission is. But I think what we have to look at is the bigger picture. I know people, and I know Carlos Saldivia has a good friend a couple that went to like coming college and chose to stay here after and have made their home here for the last 40 or 50 years and have bought their house and other houses they've fixed up there's a couple I'm thinking of and he can he can uh, I think no but my point is that when people come to like coming college some of them stay and right now the biggest challenge we face in this county is repopulation hands down honestly repopulation and, and the problems with drugs because uh, the drugs are, are robbing uh, people of, uh, you know, of our workforce and our youth. So anyway, so to, to answer your question, it's sort of, uh, we all have to look at it as, as working together to try to accomplish this. Okay, any other comments? The last one is yes. from Katara, uh, just for revitalizing. Okay. Tom, real quick. Okay. Yep. I think let me come up or yeah just okay I'll give you a minute all right um, one, of the, one of the problems once again with uh, with the airlines um, there's one carrier that has uh, reported um, this uh, right here yeah uh, Facts mean uh, the pilots union at a major U.S. airline internally reports a 300% rise in long-term disability claims this year among its members who are nearly all vaccinated. Remember before, his vaccines are really causing a lot of damage, especially pilots because of the attitude. And there's definitely a pilot shortage. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's causing the problems of this, the change in the attitude. Yeah. That's, our, that's another factor is pilot shortage system. There's an, I think there's another more, problem. More comment. Comment. Yeah, but that's okay. You know, I think it's good. While we don't want to get into a complete back and forth, I think it's not often that uh, that constituents have an opportunity to come and ask us questions and hear what we think. So, go ahead, Mr. All right, uh, from Carlos, is the Williamsport Area School District kicking in some cash uh, into the parking lot? After all, they'll be the people that will benefit the most from the tax. Well, I don't think they're permitted probably under the state education code because that money is appropriated for state education and it isn't a parking garage that will serve the school district. It's benefit. down in the... They will benefit the most on the taxes. Well, when they benefit, we benefit, right? When we get more people contributing to school taxes, then it lowers the burden on everyone. Yeah. It's entitled to the statement. Right. Oh, no, absolutely. Everyone's <laughs> entitled to their statement. I just, I don't want... Anybody Listen, else? we all benefit when our kids get educated, right? Sure. Okay, anybody else from the audience? Hearing none, our meeting's adjourned. Our next meeting will be August the 11th, right here at 10 a.m. in this uh, room. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah.
Oh, did you want to talk? Yes, come and talk. Yeah, come on. Come on. Scott, you want to go back? Give me your part of this. I got an update for you guys. I, don't know. I, was, I, was okay. you can I can tell. I can tell, Bill. It was obvious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 